All right, we're going to go over a brief overview of what exactly this video is going to contain. Um, we're going to be using the GoPro to take still images. We're going to take those images from each SD card and we're going to import them onto our computer. We're then going to stitch all of those images using Auto Panel Pro. Once we get the stitched panoramic, we are going to use a, the EXIF tool to inject metadata to make it equal rectangular. We're then going to take the panoramic and remove the tripod and the shadow with uh, Photoshop and Flexify 2, which is an add-on. Then we're going to upload our images to Google Drive or in some form or fashion and download them to the Google Street app. And then we're going to go ahead and publish and connect all those photos using the Google Street View app. So let's go ahead and go and uh, get into it. We're uh, currently just taking the images from each SD card and putting them into my uh, external hard drive. As we can see, I'm going just through each one. I've gone through four so far, so we're just going to go ahead and grab these last two. And we're going to grab the uh, the data from each uh, SD card and go ahead and copy it over to my hard drive. And we're just going to go ahead and grab the entire folder structure. And like I said, I've already done uh, four out of the six, so we'll just do the, the fifth and the sixth one real quick. And let's go ahead and do the, the very last one. Insert the, uh, the last SD card. And get those panoramic images. Go ahead and copy the folder structure over again. All right, now we're good to go. We have uh, the first step complete. We have all the images in a certain area on my external hard drive. So let's go ahead and uh, open up uh, Auto Panel Pro and let's go ahead and find those images. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna be creating groups for each um, of the six images. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, increase this since we're gonna increase the speed because we're gonna go through and find each image out of all of those SD cards. So once we have all the, the six images that go together, we have a group and we can go ahead and detect which will automatically stitch them for us. Uh, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna go and edit them. We want to edit the, the stitched image so that way we can adjust the, the horizon so that way it actually looks correct rather than um, incorrectly. So we're just going to use this tool figure out what looks best for us. So it's looking pretty good now. I think we're good to go. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, render these. Uh, I'm going to be rendering them as a JPEG. I'm going to select a certain folder to export these out to. And you do get to choose um, the, the quality of the, the export, the rendered uh, panoramic. So let's go ahead and save it into a certain location. Everything looks good. We've got the JPEG, the output, set it at maximum. And let's go ahead and uh, render it.
So we're just going to go ahead and click render. Take a little time to stitch it all together. And you can batch uh, render these if you if you want to. So that looks like we're done there. So let's go ahead and find it to see what it looks like. There we go. So we have two. I've done two so far. So there we go. Looks pretty pretty decent. Horizon looks good. And that's the first one. So it looks pretty pretty successful. No complaints. All right, now that we got uh, some, some examples to, to work with, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, you can continue on more groups for all your images, but we're going to go ahead and go to the, the uh, metadata tool. So what I like to do is rename all of these. So that way, because the, the, the metadata tool, we actually have to use uh, via console. So I'm going to have to be typing these images names um, into the console to actually make it work. So just rename all those. Uh, here's the EXIF tool. I'm using a Mac. Uh, so go ahead and download this. You can use Windows and or Mac. And it is a console-based terminal metadata injection tool. So let's go ahead and open it up. As you can see, I went directly to the folder with all the, where the images are located at. And we're gonna go ahead and enter in the command, which will inject our equal rectangular for each image. And as you can see above, it's gonna be making a copy of the original. So that way, in case we screw up somehow um, in the future, we actually have a backup, which is really nice. So it does make a copy, and then now that image has the metadata correctly injected so we can upload to any type of viewer and it knows how to recognize it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do a few, two, three here. Uh, so obviously you're gonna go through the entire batch for yourselves, but now you understand how to do it, so go ahead and do that. And then now let's go ahead and go into to Photoshop. So now we're gonna clean up the shadows and the tripod and or if you have a body, I was just standing there and holding up a, a monopod for extra height. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, open each one of these. And I use a tool called Flexify 2, which is an add-on to Photoshop. It does give you a 30-day trial before purchasing, which I'm still on the trial period. It does work pretty well. So here we're in uh, Photoshop, and up top, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of this. And let's go up to the menu, and go to our, it's called Flaming Pair Flexify 2. Well, first of all, we have to make a duplicate layer so that way we can apply the filter on it. All right, so we're going to choose uh, equal rectangular to zenith and native. So that way this is a, a layer, uh, the, the top layer. And then we're going to merge the two once we uh, get rid of the, the, the shadow body and the tripod. Let's go ahead and apply that. Let it process. All right, there we go. Now we can easily fix this issue and get rid of myself and or tripod, shadows, all that fun stuff. Um, I'm going to be using the uh, the stamp tool in uh, Photoshop, which is pretty easy to, to do, to use. Um, so we're just going to adjust the size. Um, you can get pretty fancy with this. Um, so you, you can take some time. I really don't care too much of what it looks like as long as it looks halfway decent. So slowly but surely, we'll go ahead and increase the speed just to get it done because I think you understand how this works. So obviously the more you use it, the more uh, you know blurred it looks. So you can work, spend enough time if you want to make it perfect. 
But uh, most of the time, people aren't going to be looking directly down anyways. So as long as the, the distraction of the shadow and the tripod are gone, then you're pretty much good to go. Eh, that's looking pretty, pretty good. Good enough for my standards. So let's go ahead and go back to Flexify 2. We're going to rotate it back around. I'm going to go back to the, uh, the filter. We're going to switch it up. So now it's just basically the, the exact opposite. So now we're on the zenith and then we're going to go back to equal rectangular. I'm going to apply this. Looking good. Wait for it to process. All right, looking good, looking good. So now all we gotta do is merge these two together. So let's go over here to the layers. We're gonna merge visible. And now we have one layer with it looking pretty good. Um, so for the Omni, it, it typically, it kind of drowns out the, the colors. So what I like to do is um, add some saturation to make it look more natural. Because um, it is pretty grayed out um, if you compare it to just a normal photograph. So you can play around with the settings um, to, to figure out what, what seems acceptable for you. I usually uh, do the saturation, I think, I don't know, like plus 40 or something like that. Because obviously too much is a little, a little hardcore. Just to get a little more color into the, the photo. Make it a little more natural-ish compared to gray out. We're good to go here. Um, so one thing you do want to do, uh, so go ahead, we're going to merge these together again. So that way it's just one file. And then we're going to file save as. So you want to do save as because it keeps the metadata tags that's already injected in here. Otherwise, if you do a, a save, then it's going to, you're going to have to re-inject the metadata back in. So we're just going to choose um, cert quality pretty high. And we are pretty much good to go. So now go through all the images that you want to do and eat one at a time until you get them all done. So here I have uploaded the um, all of my images into Google Drive and we are now going to share them to the street, Google Street View uh, mobile app. So in the profile you will see all the images that uh, came from the Google Drive and we're going to publish them. We're going to use a few here for an example. It does take a little while. And then once those do complete, they're now moved from the private to the to profile. Um, and I haven't published them yet. So here we're going to select the, before publishing, we have to select the, the map or where the, the GPS location is. Now we're publishing. So after we've selected the actual location, we're going to publish. All right, we're good to go. So now they're actually in our profile for Memorial Park. And what we're going to do here is we're going to select all of these. And then we are going to move and connect photos. So here's the final result um, of what a full example would look like. So basically, you'd have all of them stacked up. Um, and then you move the dots around. I like to use the, the satellite view because it's usually a lot easier to understand and compare and contrast to the photo of where it should be located at. So all this works is you, you drag dots around um, to, to the specific locations. I usually try to find an important viewpoint, so like this path for instance, and uh, try to adjust the, the image. Uh, we're actually going to use the, the bridge. So as you can see, uh, the, the red parts is where your view is. So you can move around the image and you can also change the, um, uh, I guess the compass. So the compass view, the, you know, the specific direction. So you want to do that with every single image, every single node, panoramic node, and then you want to link them together. So the, the, the straight solid lines are linked together. And as you can see on the, the bottom view, you can see all of the other nodes that are attached to each other.
So we can see every single node. So this is what the, the end user would actually see on the app. So let's go ahead and just click through and uh, see what it would, it would look like. So as we're clicking through, you can see the, the, the nodes at the top. We're slowly going through them all. One by one, I'd go through them all just to make sure that they are, they, they do look pretty good. Because if you miss one, then it'll be a little strange when uh, users are, are using it on the uh, either Google Maps via browser or through the app itself. So overall, this looks uh, pretty good. So we're pretty much done at this point. We just go ahead and click the checkbox, uh, make the changes, and you are good to go. So now you've completed all of your uploads to Google Street View.